is part 82 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss creating custom validation attribute. We'll be working with the example that we started in part 80. So please watch parts 80 and 81 before proceeding with this video. Now, any value outside the range of 112000 and 112010 will throw a validation error message for this higher date property. Now let's say we want to keep this minimum value restriction as it is, but we want to change the maximum value. We want the maximum value to be today's date instead of this hard coded date. And to achieve that, we'll be tempted to use something like this. So obviously within .NET to get current date, we can use datetime.now dot two short date string. Now look at this, when we compile this, we will get a compilation error. So obviously we cannot use datetime.now as the argument for attributes. Let's see how to fix this using a custom validation attribute. First of all, let's add a folder and let's name it common. And let's add a class file to this folder. And let's call it date range attribute. So this is going to be the name of our custom attribute that we are going to create. So the file name is also date range attribute.cs. So here we have this class date range attribute. Now first of all, let's get rid of the namespaces that we don't need to keep things simple. Now this class is going to inherit from range attribute class and this range attribute class is present in system.componentModel.data annotations namespace. So let's go ahead and bring that in. So this class is going to inherit from range attribute class. Now let's include a constructor for our date range attribute class. And then keep in mind, we want to keep our minimum value restriction as it is. So let's pass that as a parameter to the constructor. And then this constructor of the state range attribute class is going to invoke the base class constructor. What's the base class for this class? Range attribute. And if we go to the definition on range attribute, class, look at this, it has got several overloaded constructors. We're going to invoke this overloaded constructor that takes three parameters. So let's flip to our date range attribute. So to invoke the base class constructor, we use base keyword. And then the moment I open the bracket, notice that it shows us all the constructor versions that are available on our base class, which is range attribute class. So we're going to make use of this overloaded version. To get the type, we use type of keyword. So get the type of date time. And minimum value, we are going to pass this parameter as the argument for minimum value to the base class. And how are we going to get the maximum value? So obviously, we want the maximum value to be today's date. And to get the current date and time, we use date time dot now. And since we are only interested in date part, let's convert that to short date string. And then this constructor is going to have an empty body. Look at that. All we are do doing here is we created a constructor and this constructor is going to invoke the base class constructor. That's it. We are done creating our custom uh, validation attribute. Now all that is left is to use this validation attribute with the higher date property within our employee class. So instead of using the range attribute, let's use date range attribute and this date range attribute is present in mvc demo.common namespace so let's include that within our employee class and now let's decorate this higher date property with date range attribute and we need to specify the minimum value and we want to keep that minimum value restriction to 11210 I mean 2000 so let's go ahead and pass that all right so let's build our solution let's fire up a browser let's navigate to the index view
then let's click edit to navigate to the edit view and look at that today the date is uh, the current date is 2108-2013 let's try 2208-2013 which is day after tomorrow so we should get a validation error message look at that the field higher date must be between 112000 and 2108 2000, uh, 2013 so if I change that to 21 which is today's date it should accept that value and save it to the database as expected alright very good now let's look at another example of creating a custom validation attribute now let's say our business rules have changed and we don't want any restriction on minimum value okay so we want to accept any value for this higher date property as long as the date is less than or equal to today's date so to enforce that let's create another custom validation attribute okay so let's add a class file to this common folder and let's call this current date And then again, let's get rid of the namespaces that we don't need. So now, this current date class, actually, let's rename that to current date attribute. Okay, so this current date attribute class is going to inherit from a validation attribute. Now, if you remember, this date range attribute is inheriting from range attribute class. And if you look at this range attribute class, is that's inheriting from validation attribute class. So if you want to create a custom validation attribute, then we either directly or indirectly inherit from validation attribute class. Okay. Now since I don't want to make um, you know use of any of the methods and constructors and properties that are available in range attribute, I'm going to inherit directly from validation attribute class. So this current date attribute class is going to inherit from validation attribute class, but that class is again present in system.componentModel.data annotations namespace. So let's go ahead and bring that in as well. All right. So let's make this class inherit from validation attribute class. And if we go to the definition on this validation attribute class, this class contains one virtual method called isValid. So this is the method that we are interested in. We need to override this method. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So look at this. The moment we type override and once I press space, then it will show me all the methods uh, that can be overridden. And the method that we are interested in is this isValid method. Okay, let's get rid of this call to the base class isValid method. And let's provide the uh, implementation for this is valid function and look at this the date time value that that we are going to provide to this attribute is going to come into this function as an object type okay so first of all let's go ahead and convert that to date time so date time and let's name the object reference variable as date time and we need to convert the value that is coming into this function to date time and to do that let's use to date time function and then pass the value okay so if the date time is less than or equal to date time dot now then we want to return true because we want the date value to be less than or equal to today's date in which case we'll return true else we will return false so instead of having all this lines of code what we can do is we can achieve all this in a single line all we want to do is return whatever this expression returns so this expression is either going to return a true or a false okay so let's return simply the expression result you know if it's less than the current date and time it's going to return true otherwise it's going to return false so we can get rid of all these lines all together all right so we are done creating another custom validation attribute all that is left is to use this 
attribute with our hire date property in the employee class. Okay, so instead of using date range attribute, I want to use current date attribute. Look at that. And then this attribute doesn't expect any parameters to be passed in, so I'm not going to pass any parameters. So let's build our solution and let's navigate to the edit view. So at this point, it should accept any date. You know, there's no restriction on minimum value. As long as it is less than the current date and time, um, it should accept it. So 21 is today's date. Let's try 22, which is definitely not the current date. So the field higher date is invalid. And then let's try, you know, something 21, which is the value that it should accept. Look at that, it saves as expected. On the other hand, if I try 0101 2010, or let's try 2009, we shouldn't have any restriction on the minimum date time value. Look at that, that gets saved as well. On the other hand, if we try something like this and click Save, look at that, the value is not valid for higher date. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.